So it took a long time, didn't it? <laughs> the system that I have is based on a worst case scenario. And that's not because I'm a negative, negative person. I'm very positive. But as I'm doing my food storage, I'm thinking, well, wow, what if there's, what if there's an earthquake? What if there's a, all these what ifs, what ifs? And I finally said, let's just make it the worst case scenario. There's no electricity. There's no running water. No government, government is going to come and help me. I am on my own with my backyard, and this is all I've got. Can I still do this? And with this kind of a system, I can, my family can not only survive, but we're going to be eating chocolate brownies while we do it. <laughs> so right away, I should get your attention that this is kind of a cool system. If you, the first thing you're going to do is decide how much you want to store. If you want to do a three-month supply, a six-month supply, if you want to do a year's supply, the, it's exactly the same. The system is going to work exactly the same. The only thing that's, that's going to change are the numbers that you use. And this is what we're doing. You're going to choose seven breakfasts and seven dinners that you would like to have once a week. And I want you to pick things that you really like. Pick your, pick your favorite dinners, and sweet and sour chicken, and uh, tamale pie, and whatever it is that you like. Pick your favorite meals, seven, seven dinners and seven breakfasts. And you're going to have it once a week. Now, if you're going to have a year's supply, there are 52 weeks in a year. So you're going to have this meal 52 times. My personal food storage, just to throw this out to you, I have 14 dinners because I, I like the variety. I didn't like the thought of having spaghetti every Sunday. So I have 14 dinners. I couldn't have come up with as many breakfasts, so I do have seven breakfasts. And my husband said, where's lunch? The men are always going, I'm sure all you guys are going, where's lunch? Where's lunch? You're skipping a meal. Uh, we're not. If we're in a worst case scenario and there's no electricity, I'm going to do all of my cooking in a solar oven, which needs no electricity. And I can cook everything. Every recipe that's in this book was cooked in my solar oven. So it's great because you don't need the electricity. But in solar cooking, you can't start dinner at 5 o'clock and expect to eat at 6. Not going to happen. So if we're going to do what our ancestors did. We'll have breakfast in the morning. We'll have a big meal in the middle of the day, that 10 to 2 time when the sun's nice and bright, you can get your baking done, or your cooking done. And then during that time period, I'm going to bake a loaf of bread every day. And I'm also going to bake muffins and cakes, apple pies, different things like that. When nighttime comes and there's no cooking time, we'll bring out that homemade bread and we'll have chicken sandwiches or bread and butter, bread and jam, maybe some of that chocolate cake. So we're really not skipping a meal. We're just sort of gluing them around a little bit. So we've got our seven dinners, seven breakfasts and seven dinners. What you're going to do is you're going to take your card. You're going to take 14 note cards and you're going to write your meal on each one of those cards. Here's a spaghetti. Here's your um, beef stew. All, every one of your recipes, you're going to write one recipe on each card. And you're going to put everything that it takes to make your family a spaghetti dinner. If it takes one jar of spaghetti sauce, one pint of sausage, one pound of spaghetti, three cups of water to cook the spaghetti and that dash of salt, everything to make your family a spaghetti dinner. If you've got four teenage boys, it's going to take more than one jar of spaghetti sauce. You know what your family eats. That's what you write on this left-hand side of the card. Then, if you're doing a year supply, 52 weeks in a year, 52 times. You multiply everything by 52. Is that just so easy? If you're doing a three-month supply, you're going to mul multiply everything by 13. And yes, there are 13 weeks in three months. Trust me. So you've got 52 pounds of spaghetti, 52 jars of, of uh, sausage. You've got 10 gallons of water and 13 teaspoons of salt. This is everything it takes to make spaghetti dinner for my family once a week for a year. You do the rest of your cards, you have an entire year supply on these 14 cards and everything it takes to feed your family for an entire year down to the teaspoon of salt. I'm a detailed person and this is as detailed as you can get. But it's nice because if you don't make it detailed, for instance, I was always buying cases of dehydrated apples. I like them. They taste good. They're, it's a nice snack. But it was never enough. You know what I'm talking about. You're thinking, oh, do I have enough powdered milk? I've got nine children, and I better buy more powdered milk. And I was always buying the dehydrated apples. But when I started the system, I realized what I really wanted was apple pie. 
and it takes eight number 10 cans of dehydrated apples to have apple pie once a week. And I also know what it takes in flour and sugar and spices, everything it takes to make an apple pie. So I've gone from chewing dried apples to having homemade apple pie. This is cool. This is going to make your food storage real food. And it's everything that you want. And it's as much as you want. My husband really likes oatmeal. And he asked to have it three times a week. Okay. And I store for him to have oatmeal three times a week. There's no way I'm eating oatmeal three times a week. So I have multiple meal and other things that you can do that. The individuality is great. If you have food allergies, this is fabulous because you now decide exactly what you're going to eat and the things that are good for your lifestyle. So the individuality is, is great in this, in this system. So you've got your three by five cards and you're, you've written everything it takes to have that meal for a year. Now you're going to make a master shopping list. And it's probably going to be several pages, but my master shopping list looks like this. And what it is, it's an alphabetical listing of everything that's in my food storage, from almonds to yeast, every single food item. I'm transferring the information from my 14 cards onto this alphabetical list. Let's say rice is the first is the item that I'm looking at. The first column is the food item, whether it's almonds or, or uh, sugar, but the, we'll take rice for instance. The next column, it's, there's five columns. The next column is going to be every meal that has rice in it. I have 36 cups for my sweet and sour chicken, and I have 36 cups of rice in my salmon and rice for a total of 72 cups. The third column is that total. I have an equivalency page in your booklet, and that's going to tell you there are 12 cups of rice in a number 10 can. So I'm going to say, well, I've got 72 cups divided by 12. I need six cans of rice, six number 10 cans. In the next column, the fourth column, how much do you already have? It's likely you already have a lot of these things. So I've got four cans of rice. And in that column, I'm going to say where it is in my home, it's in the master bedroom, and when I purchased it, whatever the date was. And in the last column, it's what I still need to buy. If, I've got, if I need six cans and I have four, I still need to buy two more cans of rice. So everything that you need to know about your food storage in this master shopping list, every item, what meal it's in, how much you need, how much you have, how much you still need to buy. You'll take this with you whenever you go grocery shopping. And when you see something on sale, you're going to go, oh, well, look, I need five cans of that to finish my food storage. And you buy it, you mark it off, you date your food, and you put it in your food storage. So that's pretty much the system, the, the very simple choosing the seven meals. Let me warn you, if you don't do this part of it, if you don't choose the meals and make the shopping list, you're going to just end up buying lots and lots of food because it's never enough. You know that, don't you? You, you just keep buying food because you think it's just not enough. It's not enough. And with this, I know exactly what it's going to take to have an entire year's supply down to the teaspoon of salt. I'm going to save time and money and effort because I no longer buy foods that I don't eat and I never buy more than I need. And I'm not going to buy too little either. That's important. All right. Um, 